and it's kind of old news because the Warriors are back in the NBA Finals for the sixth time in the last eight seasons. They are now going for their fourth title in eight seasons as they dispatch the Dallas Mavericks in Game 5, 121-10. Uh, Clay Thompson, really the story of this game for Golden State, 32 points. He made eight threes in this one, which was similar to the closeout game against Memphis, in which he also hit eight threes in that one. And you consider the comeback story for him. Uh, he missed over two years, came back in January, tore his ACL in the 2019 finals, and he tore his Achilles in 2020. Now leading Golden State back to the NBA finals. Uh, Luka Doncic, 28 points. Went under his player prop of 34 and a half, uh, but uh, he was not great from beyond the arc. And, and when I say not great, I mean putrid, like three of 13. So game would have been a whole lot closer. If maybe he hits three more of those. We, I mean, we might be looking at a different basketball game. Instead, Warriors march on. They improve to an eye-popping 9-0 and at home this postseason. Get some instant analysis. Welcome to CBS Sports basketball analyst Tim Doyle. Tim, Golden State marching on to the NBA Finals, a perfect 9-0 at home this postseason. Your reaction to them closing out the Mavs here in Game 5? Yeah, this was just a total team effort. You talked about Klay Thompson. Anybody who's ever played any sport, for someone to come back from that sort of adversity, you know, I actually had under in his player prop. It was a line that originally started in Game 1 at 20 and a half. And then I creeped all the way down to 18 because he had not gone over that number. Well, doesn't he know this isn't game six? He's game six, Clay, not game five, Clay. Today, he was 32 points, but it wasn't just him. Steph didn't even have 20 points. Let me give you two guys that had massive performances. Kavon Looney and Draymond Green combined. 27 points, 24 rebounds, and 13 assists. You know, Wiggins was making shots. Jordan Poole had... A fantastic stretch there in the first half. Yeah, they're going to be really tough at home. They feed off that crowd. It just seemed like the Mavericks came out wild to say they just lacked energy on the defensive end. Warriors got whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. 120 points, 50% from the field. Didn't miss a free throw. Warriors at its best. What did you see from Luka Doncic, who struggled from beyond the arc? 3 of 13 in this game. Just that he needed to get his game kick-started, and you could see that he was complaining to the referees about not getting foul calls that Steph was getting, that Jordan Poole was getting. But then all of a sudden, it was a single-digit game in the third quarter, and you thought, whoa, 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 this is not supposed to end like this. Like, they did make a run, and he did pick up his energy level, and he did start getting to the free throw line. But, you know, 28 points on 28 shots is just unacceptable. You know, here's a guy who's carried his team all season into the postseason. And tonight, honestly, I thought he looked a little tired. I thought he looked a little beat. And, you know, who knows if he is 100%, but he was carrying such a heavy load. Guy's a fantastic player. He's going to be one of the all-time greats of this generation. He just didn't have enough supporting cast throughout this series. They had their opportunities. Their opportunity in this series was game two. They're up nearly 20 points. They lost that game or else, who knows, maybe this is a series that ends up going seven games. But one thing about the Warriors is you're going to get these little opportunities to take advantage of it. John Morant missed the lefty layup in game one. Bye-bye to the Grizzlies. Like, if you don't take advantage of your opportunities against the Warriors, they will certainly make you pay. All right, so Golden State improves to a perfect 9-0 and at home this postseason. Is that a big deal to you, or is that something we make up in the media make a big deal, or is there something to that? No, I think it's an enormous deal. You know, I always talk back to this as Steve Kerr goes to another NBA Finals. He was always the Knicks coach. He went like this, Knicks, Warriors, Knicks, War. It's one of the great sports decisions of all time. It's like Jordan choosing Nike. Like, really, it's like one of the greatest sports. He was almost the coach of the New York Knicks. Like, that's insane to think about. And what is so amazing about what he does is Steph Curry didn't start the first playoff series. Think about the guile that that takes, the basketball panache of Steve Kerr to go, Steph, you want to come off the bench? Cool, you're cool. We'll start pool, and then we'll get pool involved. We'll build his confidence. Oh, and Draymond Green, oh, Steph's coming off injury. Remember, coming into this postseason, we were like, ooh, ooh the Warriors are going to be able to figure it out. All these guys coming back in the postseason – 
And Steve Kerr is just like, no, no problem. I'm just going to take this guy here. Kevon Looney's going to have 20 points in one game. It just seems like he's always pressing the right button. You know, Bielitsa was out there. Gary Payton Jr. gets hurt. No problem. I'm just going to replace him. Moses, Moses Mooney's out there banging down shots. So Steve Kerr, one of the great sports decisions of all time. No, no to the New York Knicks. Yes, yes to the Golden State Warriors. And there it is right there, number six going to the NBA Finals. Yeah, what's impressive, too, it's at six NBA Finals in the past eight seasons. I mean, not only is that that's that's impressive, it's efficient, right? I mean, when Steve Kerr gets there six out of the last eight seasons, that, that's efficient as well. Uh, going back to Luka here a, as we look ahead uh, to what is next for Dallas because I mean everybody wants to know what's next for Luka and the Mavs where do they go from here of course they're going to get on a plane and fly home to Dallas but what does Luka need moving forward I think first and foremost he has to get in the best shape of his life I think that his basketball IQ is second to none but what the Joker did in Denver was he got into the best shape of his life you, know, you could go back to about two, three years ago. Joker had months where he was averaging like 13 points a game because he was out of shape. And what I want to see, I don't think Luka Doncic is ever going to look like, I don't know, Kevin Willis or Desmond Bain. I don't think he's ever going to be ripped like that. But let's see if he can get his body in the top peak physical condition because he's asked to do so much and he takes a beating. Remember he had the scratch in game one? He is extremely physical. Uh you know, I, I know his game, it doesn't rely on athleticism, so it's going to age well, but he really has to take tip-top care of his body. It's just like when you're 23 years old, you have a late night on the town, right? Wake up the next day, you're whistling Dixie. As you get older, right, you, you, you don't really respond that well to those late nights. Same thing on a basketball court. We're watching James Harden right now, who's only 32 years old, age very, very quickly. And I think the same could be same for, for Luka Doncic if he doesn't kind of change his body. So the, the guy's an unbelievable offensive player. I thought he looked tired tonight. He was complaining to the refs. Warriors didn't make, you know, didn't miss a shot. I just thought the defensive effort today from the, the, the Mavericks was subpar as your Golden State scored 69 first half points. And yeah, I know they made a little bit of a run there in the third quarter, but honestly, Akeem, this game wasn't really competitive. No, I mean, we saw the largest lead was 25 by Golden State. We saw Dallas make a run there in the third quarter. They went on a 15-2 run to end the third. Luka had 15 points in that third quarter. They got it to 10, but, you know, Golden State, look, as you see this team as it's constructed, so talented, so deep, of course, led by Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. When you have watched this Warriors team throughout the postseason, what have you learned about them up until this point as, of course, the NBA Finals coming a week away? Well, I think that, you know, you know what you're going to get from Steph Curry. And Steph is so smart at this point where he's going to understand what time and place and do I need to score more. But there's some giant X factors that the Warriors have. You know, is Klay Thompson going to make shots? Because he's made shots in a few games in the NBA playoffs. And honestly, they've been, you know, walks in the park for Golden State. So, you know, if he can regain that form, he's had a lot of games where he's been under 20 in the playoffs. When he goes over that number... Well, Golden State's really tough to beat. Let's not forget he made that enormous shot in Memphis in game one. So uh, I, I think that him, Jordan Poole, the energy that Poole gives off the bench as far as creating space. You know, when Steph goes to the bench, he becomes the primary ball handler. He had a bunch of points, but, you know, I think it really comes down to Clay. And you see the struggles in the first four games, and then he put it all together. He banged down eight threes. And, you know, when he's hitting, and Steph is really consistent, I know his numbers throughout the series were up and down, but I think Steph, you know, he's better when he doesn't have to go out there and get 35. When he's getting other guys today, I, I thought tonight was probably the, the best team effort from Golden State this entire postseason. I mean, Draymond Green was making threes. Kevon Looney has been, if you had to rate Kevon Looney on a scale of 1 to 10 in the playoffs, I don't know, 14? Like, it's he's been, been awesome. unbelievable. It's been awesome like, on like, the boards. Block of shots, rebound. Yeah, he's been amazing. So, but tonight, it just seemed like every single starter did something, and then Poole came off the bench and gave me that energy. Like, nobody was beating them tonight. But I think if they play Boston, that's going to be a pretty amazing series because I've said all postseason long, I think Boston's the most balanced team in the NBA. I might have to be checking my notes because what I saw tonight, that Warriors team is pretty balanced. Well, the Celtics 7-3 and three in the last 10 meetings against the Golden State Warriors. There's that note for you there. Um, Look, if it is if it is Boston, if, if they close out 
on it's Friday Boston. night. It, you, you're, you, you already, it's, okay, there's no if. It's Boston. It's Boston. So yeah. Boston's, Boston's winning the series against Miami. There's no question about it. All right, so then you're putting them into the finals, so it's Boston, Golden State. Golden State's going to be the favorite, no question there. Who you got in a best of seven? I know that Golden State has not lost a, a home game in the playoffs, but I, I have Boston. I, I think that, you know, Tatum and Brown, when those guys get cooking, and, you know, I, I know that, you know, Miami has stretched this series to six games, but it easily could have been five games. You know, and I know Milwaukee pushed into seven games, but, you know, I thought what Boston did in game six in Milwaukee, going up and beating Giannis on his home floor and beating him handily, I thought that was the most impressive win in the entire postseason. Even more impressive than Dallas going to, to Phoenix. Like, he beat Giannis on his home floor in a closeout game, and then you just smacked him in game seven. Uh, I like Boston. I, I, I don't say that with a ton of confidence. I got to give the Warriors credit. But if you really dive into what Golden State has done in these playoffs, right? You beat Jokic in Denver. Not a great supporting cast, okay? You play Memphis. Ja doesn't play in the series. And you have some life and death games. You know, he makes a layup in game one. Maybe you don't win the... But you survive in advance. And then you play the Mavericks where... You know, you beat them in game two, and, you know, it's Luka and, and his support. Like, I don't know if they've really run into that buzzsaw as of late. Like, Boston's a different bird, uh, different than any other team that they have seen so far. So uh, I'm going to go with the Celtics there in that series. Give me Golden State in six. Venmo, let's get it going. Zell, Todd Zeal. Golden State in six, that's what I would say. Boston, formidable. Uh, there's no question about it. But Golden State's deep, and they can run, and they are fast, and they can just get buckets at will. Tim Doyle joining us here on CBS Sports HQ as the Warriors march on to the NBA Finals for the sixth time in the last eight seasons. As we mentioned, a perfect 9-0 and at home this postseason. You know who else uh, went 9-0 and at home in the postseason? The Warriors in 2017. They won a title that year. Looking to win a title this year. NBA Finals start one week from today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.